Hello there. Is this thing on? How in the name of Donald McGillivray do you work this week contraption? Yeah. I guess I'm just gonna have to trust that it's gonna work. Right. Set it right there. Hello there. I'm Scotty the Scotsman. And I've got a wee little bit of a challenge for you. Today we're going to be making boats out of paper that can float on water while holding a wee little object like an egg or a battery. You'll have one minute to make your boat. I'll go first so you know what to do. My time begins now. Where's my paper? Ah, there you are, you wee little scanner. Oops. Made a little bit of a mess there, but I've got my paper. Ah, hold your wish. You've made a mess too. Oh, oh my time's running out. All right, let's make the boat. I feel like I've got to fold the paper a little bit. I think I've seen this before, you know. Fold it here. But I've got so far. Oh, I'm not tied on this. Ah, my bum's out the window, I can't do it. That's just like a lopsided little blob there. I, oh, my time's out. Here's my boat. My kids, I have a feeling this boat says God is a wing to a blind horse, but uh, we'll see you later. Now it's your turn. Uh, go ahead and make a boat in one minute that can float on water while holding something, and hopefully yours turns out better than mine. You've got one minute, and I'll see you in a moment. Pause the video. Make a paper boat in one minute. All right, did you do it? Well, let's test out the boats now. I'll go first. The SS Scotty. Aha, she floats! I'm amazing, look at that! That wee little barge floating in the water. Now's the real moment of truth. I have to test it with some weight, and I don't have any eggs. I'm going to use this battery. Is it floating? No, no! No, the way it bile your head! She's got the high door! I'm gonna scalp your wee behind it! I'm sorry, it's a... Ha. It's your turn. Uh, test out your vessel in some water, or may maybe a sink or something, and try putting something like an egg in it. And if it floats, you... You can take a picture of it and have your parents send it to us at metkids at mecklenburg.org or you can post it to social media and tag metkids and if your ship does not float, you can join my club. The sad, sunken ship squad. See you in a bit. Pause the video, test your boat. If it floats, send a picture to metkids at mecklenburg.org or post to social media and tag at metkids. My watercraft sunk. Sometimes we face situations in life where it seems like we try every single solution imaginable but nothing seems to work and everything seems to be falling apart or, or sinking or we feel like we're stuck in something bad and you may want to give up. But lying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance to come back here and tell yourself that you will keep trying and never give up? Here's story, lads, for how to keep going when the going gets tough. Enjoy. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about grit, while we take a look at the story of someone who had to craft their way out of a tight situation. I'm Sebastian. And I'm Skylar. What does grit mean, Skylar? Grit is refusing to give up when life gets hard. I think I deserve a grit award. What for? Yesterday, my little cousin lost her tooth swimming at the Y. I spent half an hour diving for it. I found it for her. That's very gritty. It was at the bottom of the deep end. So weird. When we swim, our teeth float with us, but a tiny tooth by itself sinks. I think this calls for a float challenge. Let's try it. It's water. What should we test to see if it floats? I've opened up the chat for suggestions. Fluffy cookie? Wants us to try pumpkin. Uh, do we have a pumpkin? Uh, 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 
We have a pumpkin. Sink or float? I say sink. <laughs> it floats? No way. This is insane. How? It's, it's like a watermelon, basically. Kinda like that. <laughs> Hold on, what's this? Wookiees are people too, want us to use pop? Oh, soft drink. Diet or regular? Doesn't matter, um, both. Sink or float? If a ginormous pumpkin can float, I say the soda floats. What? Diet floats, regular sinks? They're the same size can with the same amount of liquid. I feel like everything's upside down. Do we have time for more? Speed, Speed round. round. Soap. 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 <sighs> Bowling ball. Bowling ball. Bowling ball. Bowling ball. Bowling ball. Bowling ball. Oh, this is heavy. Okay. Okay. It floats? What? what? <gasps> Rubber, Rubber chicken. chicken. gonna sink. But why? None of it makes sense. Density. You're calling me dense? No. Some objects sink and others float because of density. Oh, I don't get it. Okay. Every object is made up of tiny molecules. In some objects, the molecules are packed tightly together, and other objects, the molecules are more loosely packed. That's density. The more dense an object, the more likely it is to sink. So a tiny tooth is dense and sinks. And the sugar in a regular soft drink is dense and makes it sink too. But diet soda is less dense and floats. You are not dense. I have been known to float. Now it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the second book of the Old Testament, Exodus. God created everyone and everything, but people turned away from God. Still, God made a plan to bless the whole world through Abraham and Sarah's family. Their great-grandson, Joseph, was sold into slavery in Egypt. But after many hard years, Joseph was made second in command of Egypt and saved his whole family from starving. Over the years, Joseph's family, the Israelites, grew and grew. Until the Egyptian king, Pharaoh, got scared. That's where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, everyone. So the Egyptian pharaoh was scared. There were so many Israelites, he thought they might join the Egyptians' enemies. So pharaoh forced the Israelites into slavery. And that's the way it was for hundreds of years. But no matter how hard the Egyptians made the Israelites work, Hebrew family still continued to grow. Preposterous! I declare that all Hebrew baby boys must be thrown into the Nile River. I know. This was terrible news. God had promised to bless the whole world through the Israelites. But not only were they enslaved now, they were in danger of being completely wiped out. And in the middle of all this, a woman from the tribe of Levi, Jochebed, and her husband Amram were about to have a brand new baby. Where does this part go? So insert part F at right angles with part M before locking part Z. Pyramids have got nothing on crib assembly. So if Jochebed gave birth to a baby girl, they wouldn't need to worry about Pharaoh's law. But when Jochebed had her baby, you guessed it. It's a boy! Pharaoh is not touching this baby. So for three months, Jochebed and Amram and their daughter Miriam hid the new baby boy. That. Uh, no puppy. Uh, nothing to see here. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. They tried, but after three months, there was just no way to keep hiding a baby boy with a healthy set of lungs. Jochebed wove a basket out of tall grass and 
coated it with tar. Give him to me now. But they'll still hear the baby in the basket. Come with me. Jacobed was so determined to save her baby that she made a risky and very creative move, might I add. Are we giving our baby a bath? Nope, we are giving him a chance. Now stay close by and make sure he's safe. So maybe Jacobed figured this was a place no one would come? Or maybe she knew it was the favorite bathing spot of Pharaoh's daughter. Sure enough, Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to bathe. Bring me that basket at once. I mean, Miriam must have been terrified, right? But she stayed hidden and watched to see what might happen. Poor thing. This must be one of the Hebrew babies. Miriam gathered every ounce of courage she had and ran up to Pharaoh's daughter. Would you like me to get one of the Hebrew women to take care of him for you? Yes, yes, that's a perfect idea. This was the best news! So Miriam ran home as fast as she could and told her mother everything that happened. Then together, they returned to the princess. Take this baby and feed him for me. I'll pay you. I promise I will treat him like my very own son. And she got paid! Jacobed was able to care for her son at home. And when he grew up, she took him to live at the palace with the pharaoh's daughter. The princess called him Moses, a word that meant to draw out, because she pulled the baby out of the water. Get it? The end. That's amazing. I mean, there's no way Moses' mom could have known her baby would be safe. Yes, but Amram and Jacobet didn't give up. I mean, they held on. They didn't know what to do, but they got creative, and they took the next step. So what's our part in the story? Well, things in our lives can feel really big and difficult too. Yeah, I got assigned to this group project at school and I had no idea where to start. I just wanted to quit the whole thing. What happened? Well, I prayed about it and asked for help. And eventually everyone joined in and it actually turned out okay. See, yes! When you aren't sure what to do next, ask God for help. We can also think about how we can follow Jesus during difficult times. We can start by loving God and loving others. Whether it's a friendship in trouble or a fight with your parents, you can hold on. Stay with it. God will be with you, even when things get messy. I think you guys got it. I'll see you next time. Bye. 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 So here's the thing. Hold on, even when you don't know what to do. That's how grit grows. Sink or float? Sink. <laughs> it floats. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. We'll see you next time. <laughs> For last time. <laughs> oh. I have to be honest. That lassie Jacobin, she's my hero. She trusted God and kept God even when her situation seemed impossible. Are you in the midst of something difficult? And can you see a solution? Maybe you're stuck in a class that you hate for the rest of the year, or your coach doesn't like you, and the season just started. Or a friend that you were relying on just stopped talking to you. There are so many hard things that we face. So right now, talk with your parents or whoever's in the residence that you're inside of and share with them the things that you face right now that seem really tough. And I'll see you soon. Pause the video and discuss this. What are you facing right now that's difficult? Sometimes, there isn't an easy solution to a hard situation. But hold on, even when you don't know what to do, you can trust God in those moments and ask Him to help. In fact, end today by asking God to help with your problems. Pray, ask Him to help you through everything difficult that you face. I mean, who knows, God might do something amazing with your problems like He did with Jochebed and Moses. And I'll see you next week. Give me the power to never give